Hello, and welcome back to the Crime Reel. Today, on the Crime Reel, we shall be visiting the famous Las Vegas Strip to look at the events of a casino heist back in 1993. Heather Tallchief was born on the 7th of January 1972 in Buffalo, New York. She was the first child of Fred and Anne Tallchief who went on to have another daughter who they named Elaine. Heather and Elaine were very close growing up. Elaine idolised her big sister but they had a difficult childhood. Their parents divorced and despite the fact that he was heavily addicted to drugs, alcohol and sniffing glue, their father, Fred, was granted full custody. When Heather was approximately eight years old, her father managed to get sober. He remarried and went on to have four more children. Heather was an intelligent and sensitive child who grew into a beautiful young lady with an innate sense of style. She had aspirations to work in medicine and she worked hard at school and obtained a nursing qualification in 1991. By this point, she had moved from Buffalo, New York to San Francisco in California, where she got a job as a nursing assistant at the Kimberly Quality Care Center, which was a hospice for AIDS patients. Here, she was well respected for her hard work ethic and amazing empathy with the patients who she helped. In the 14 months that she worked at the hospice, 20 patients with whom she had developed close friendships had died from their illnesses. Heather found it impossible to not become emotionally attached to the people who she had lost and her sadness started to overwhelm her. In late 1992, she was starting to question what she was doing with her life and was wondering why she should have to constantly worry about money and people dying. Living in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district, an area that had a troubled past and was still home to a thriving drug scene despite the area's regentrification, it is believed that Heather started to dabble in drugs and then left her job at the hospice. Shortly after her 21st birthday, she was in a bar where she met a man named Roberto Solis. She immediately found this man, who was 27 years older than her, both intriguing and physically attractive. At this point, she had no idea that Roberto Solis was a convicted murderer and armoured car robber with over 30 aliases. He had served 17 years in prison for murdering a security guard during a robbery in 1969 and had only been paroled a few months earlier. During his time in prison, he had used the pen name Pancho Aguila to write and publish poetry books. Heather found herself in awe of this poetic, spiritual man and soon found herself deeply in love. She felt that fate had brought them together and they practiced a form of spirituality known as sex magic. The concept that sexual energy is a potent force that can be harnessed to transcend one's normal perceived reality. Within a few weeks, Roberto confessed to Heather that he had spent time in prison for killing a security guard. By now, Heather was so in awe of Roberto, she believed his story that the killing was an accident which he deeply regretted that had now changed his life. As their relationship intensified, Roberto suggested that they move to Las Vegas as he believed that he was spiritually in a position to beat all of the odds. When they arrived in Las Vegas, Heather got a job at the armoured car service Loomis, the same company who employed the driver Roberto had shot and killed years earlier. Heather claims she did not make the connection between these two events. Some sources claim that it was Roberto who encouraged her to get into this role, whilst others claim that Heather was keen to get a career in the security industry, being quoted as stating that she wanted to start at the bottom and learn the industry inside out. With a perfect credit score, above average intelligence and a glowing reference from her previous employer, Loomis felt that she would be a great asset to their company. Roberto and Heather moved into the Mark I apartments, a high-rise building favoured by many gambling industry employees. 
they kept to themselves but were often seen hanging out at the pool where Roberto would write and Heather would swim. Heather made a positive impression on her new employers from day one. In a profession generally dominated by men, this beautiful young woman with an excellent work ethic stood out immediately. She was a popular employee and had a very caring nature, inquiring about colleagues' families and encouraged them to talk about themselves whilst revealing very little about her past. It was noted that she played down her good looks whilst at work, preferring to wear her long hair neatly tied back, thick spectacles despite having perfect vision, and rugged work boots with her Loomis uniform. Initially, she was assigned to casino house runs. This involved transporting new banknotes to gaming tables throughout the city. The new notes were easily traceable and as such deemed to be relatively low risk. Within a few weeks, Heather took a firing range test to qualify to carry a sidearm. She achieved record scores and this, along with her professional approach, very quickly led to her promotion to the cash machine runs. Unlike the casino runs, the cash machine runs contained unmarked bills. Five days a week she would drive millions of dollars of these unmarked bills down the Las Vegas Strip. She would be accompanied by two colleagues, Steve Marshall and Scott Stewart, who both became very friendly with Heather and the three developed a great working relationship. Again, accounts of the story start to vary. Some sources report by this point Heather had created fake identities, gained the trust of her colleagues and employers for less than honest reasons, she had applied for credit cards in the names of her fake identities and had established various patterns of behaviour to avoid suspicion. Meanwhile, others claim that she was simply naive, doing her job and completely under the spell of Roberto Solis. She was allegedly so in awe of him that even when he threatened to shoot her dead if she did not do as he wanted, she was still desperate to please him. It has also been reported that Roberto would hypnotise her in order to instruct her what to do when she wasn't consciously aware and able to question his requests. Irrespective of the lead up, the events of 1st of October 1993 are well documented. It was a warm Friday morning and Vegas was gearing up for another busy weekend. Heather, along with her colleagues Steve and Scott, left the Loomis depot with over $3 million in used bills. Heather was driving and at around 8am they pulled up for the first stop of the day, Circus Circus Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. Moving the money was heavy work. The two men heaved the first of the money containers from the truck. The rear doors were closed and because of the lack of available parking due to Friday being such a busy day at the casino, Heather started to drive to the other side of the casino to wait for the men to finish. Having become familiar with their routine, Heather knew that the men would be in the casino for a minimum of 20 minutes before she would need to meet them at the front exit. When Steve and Scott returned to the agreed collection point, there was no sign of Heather or the armoured truck. Initially unconcerned, they did not want to report Heather's absence to the office as they liked her and didn't want to get her into trouble. As time went on, they started to fear she had been in a serious accident or had been kidnapped. They decided to call the Loomis office. Back in 1993, there were no GPS or tracking systems on these armoured vans and so Loomis tried without success to make contact by radio. They searched the surrounding area but Heather, her vehicle and approximately $3 million of cash had disappeared into thin air. Many believed that Heather had been abducted and her body would soon turn up out in the desert. However, this theory was discounted by security footage showing Heather leaving the casino whilst alone in the van. Steve and Scott were questioned and said that Heather had seemed her normal self that morning. The only thing that they had noticed which was out of the ordinary was that she was wearing dressy shoes rather than her usual work boots. They had simply assumed that she was going somewhere nice after work. 
Heather's apartment was searched and they found the fingerprints of Roberto Solis. With his criminal past, this made much more sense to the officers than the young, inexperienced Heather completing this heist on her own. However, they also found a letter that Heather had addressed to her mother stating that it was unlikely that they would ever see each other again. Heather told her mother not to fret for they had never been true friends. It was determined that Heather and Roberto had left via Las Vegas airport disguised as an elderly man pushing his elderly wife in a wheelchair. They only had three suitcases with them and the FBI believed that the rest of the money was delivered to them separately. The FBI found a motel room in Denver where Heather and Roberto had been staying but they had again disappeared. Two weeks after the heist, the owner of a garage leased to a company called Reinforced Steel, who specialised in armoured vehicle repairs, became suspicious of his tenant and forced open the doors to his business. Inside, he found a Loomis truck, approximately $3,000, a pair of thick glasses, packing materials and various information about Miami, the Bahamas, San Diego, Mexico, Cayman Islands and Denver. Then nothing. It would appear that the crime had been meticulously planned either by Roberto alone with Heather's forced cooperation or by the two of them together. Many believed it to have been the perfect crime, simple in its execution but painstakingly researched to ensure a clean getaway. Whilst the case remained open, there was little to no progress. Four years after her disappearance, Heather was number three on the FBI's list of the 10 most sought after fugitives. It wasn't until 12 years later that this situation changed. On 12th of September 2005, a 33 year old British woman by the name of Donna Marie Eaton dropped her son off at school and boarded a plane from Amsterdam to Los Angeles. This woman was actually Heather Tallchief, who had arranged her surrender in great detail. Explaining the situation to her son, she then hired a prominent criminal defence attorney to represent her as she surrendered to the federal authorities on September the 15th, 2005. Heather admitted her role in the crime, but maintained that Roberto had controlled and manipulated her into doing what he wanted. After the heist, they ended up living off of the stolen money in Amsterdam, which Roberto fully controlled. Their relationship between the two of them had steadily declined and Roberto had begun to treat her badly. About a year later, when she discovered that she was pregnant, Heather knew she had to break free from the controlling Roberto. Two months after their son was born, she ran away from Roberto, terrified that he would track her down. That was the last time she ever saw him. Less than two years after the perfect heist, she was alone with a young baby, no money and no job. For a short time, she turned to prostitution to earn enough to provide for her son and then found a job working as a maid in a hotel. She eventually found love in a new relationship with a man who took care of her son as if he were his own. However, the constant lying and looking over her shoulder continued to take its toll. Heather was tired of being on the run and felt as though she was living in a mental prison which she perceived as being worse than a physical one. She decided to turn herself in to the American authorities to face punishment for her crime and hoped that this would allow her and her son to have a better life in the future. In 2006, Heather was tried for her role in the heist, maintaining that she had been brainwashed and controlled by Roberto. This fact was supported by a psychiatrist for the defence. She was sentenced to 63 months in federal prison and ordered to try to repay the almost $3 million in restitution to Loomis and their insurers. In June 2010, Heather was released on parole and reunited with her now 15 year old son. She has kept a very low profile ever since. Roberto Solis would now be 74 years old. He has never been found nor has the missing $3 million. So with conflicting reports and the only other perpetrator still unfound, 
Will we ever know if Heather was guilty of a crime or merely guilty of falling under the spell of the wrong man? Thank you once again for listening to The Crime Reel. Goodbye. If you're still listening, leave lucky number seven in the comments. Goodbye.